All right, good morning and welcome to One Lonely Farmer. What we've got here is lost footage of the drone. Uh, Timothy had taken some drone footage about three years, this was three years ago. Um, pretty much discussed with myself that it was three years ago and uh, pretty much come to the conclusion that it was three years ago. Um, you can see that the corn is pretty good here. Uh, the upper field had some issues with herbicide. Uh, I do believe that I'm still having issues with that particular herbicide and I'm going to change uh, the herbicide program this coming year uh, for my corn because even though the chemical guy said no it wasn't your problem I dug up plants and found burnt roots this year of course the corn has grown through it and it looks like it's going to be okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have bumper crop on corn I'm just not going to have that bumper crop on corn because it has been uh, uh, compromised uh, for a good part of its life and of course then it dried up and and we have short stalks but now we've gotten some rain not a lot of rain but we've gotten enough rain to uh, start to really fill the ears we we got through the pollination process in good standing I mean it, it pollinated pretty good we had uh, for a week or so as it was shooting tossled the uh, uh, you know you need moisture to pollinate and as dry as it was I was really quite concerned that we were going to have a problem now the humidity here was pretty horrendous for the last what did it start around June 18th we went into the 90s and we didn't well we've been in the 90s damn near every day until yesterday 80s and upper 90s low eight, upper 80s and up into the upper 90s for literally almost two months almost two months uh, but this corn yielding pretty good you can see it coming out you know the, coming up into the grain tank bubbling up pretty good uh, this is footage on the farm that uh, we're trying to purchase uh, we're getting closer every day it's just a matter of this stuff you know the green stuff the money and uh, if you're not having the uh, income that you really would like to have due to low crop prices and things like that it kind of puts a damper on the pamper but but uh, I think we're gonna be okay I think we are actually gonna be able to pull this thing off now whether we're able to continue to pull it off or not who the hell knows um, but there is a uh, a good chance that we're gonna end up with this thing and uh, life will be very interesting from that point forward uh, as you can see behind me or along my left side as I'm going down across this field is a combine there are some fence rows that were there that uh, the, the person that was farming it before this is my grandparents place where my mother was raised uh, I farmed it for one year and me and my uncle had a falling out and I didn't really I haven't been on that property I don't know if I told anybody this but for like 20 years I didn't 22 years I didn't really even go over there uh, didn't farm it then finally came to an agreement that to put bygones behind us and then you know that it worked out whatever so now we're farming it and uh, and we're gonna buy it but if you look at those fence lines behind us the former farmer on the place he let them all grow up my grandfather used to brush hog them and keep them down and those basically just separated uh, one two three four fields one was a fence an electric fence they let that all grow up into bushes and I chopped it down pissing off the deer hunters and uh, probably just about anybody else that likes to see trees grow out in a field which compromises the field uh, in a negative way and it had to be done right away when we started to farm the place because there's just no point in allowing those trees to go out through that fence line because it, it literally and I mean literally sucks the moisture out of the ground on both sides shades that ground what I will be doing uh, when we do get this farm purchased and it's you know in me and Teresa's name uh, we are going to uh, actually either rent a dozer or I'm gonna get that 955 cat now there's an animal there it goes right up it is a deer went right up the the corn rows Tim caught it with the with the drone but I don't think he saw it but it ran right past us there anyway we're gonna either rent a dozer or whatever and we're gonna level those things not level them off we're going to make them so that they're farm overs and because I'm using the vertical tillage machine to grow these crops uh, if you look and he's gonna pan around here you see that one and then across that big field behind the barn there's another one and up above 
in front of me now there's another one there's actually four of these things that need to be taken knocked down now I we cut them out with a chainsaw and I have been spraying over them with glyphosate and uh, 2,4-D when, you know, every time I burn down, I'll use 2,4-D, glyphosate, uh, Liberty, uh, dude, Liberty 2,4-D, glyphosate, uh, one of these times, I think it was the time before I resprayed the beans that are there now and I just went over it with a, a Liberty, um, no, just a glyphosate pass this time uh, to burn those down so that the bushes and everything don't get a foothold on us and cause it to be harder to deal with later. So if I take out those four fence lines, that field that goes behind the barn uh, and everything will all be one big open field, which will then create a, how many acres is that going to be? So it's 55 65 acres uh, in that block, that one big field, and the other side will be something like uh, 20. It'll be another 20 acres on the other side. So I'll have 65 and 20, which would be about 85 acres in two, literally in two fields, which to me um, is a good idea. Now, whether it is or isn't, I, I don't know. Um, but we're going to find out because I'm going to do it and we'll just farm over them. Uh, they'll just be humps in the field instead of these sharp terraces. We'll, we'll doze them over, kind of flatten them up, clean up the rocks that have been put out in there by other people and possibly my grandfather and my uncle. Um, we're going to just get that, uh, leveled off and looking good. So now you're in for a treat because it's Philippine footage time. Enjoy Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look at Jesus Christ. Is that a million? Jesus Christ, Mom. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Boy. Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 uh. Over here. Come here. Okay, so this is Jesus Christ. No, we're not in Brazil. We're in the Philippines, baby. Right? In the Philippines. So, oh, Jesus has got a crack. Anyway, that's what it is. This is a mock up of the one that's in Brazil. And, but we're in the Philippines. We are in the 100 Islands, correct? The 100, the 100 Islands. Uh, so, there's not really, a, I don't think there's 100 Islands, but there could be 100 Islands here. Don't you fall down from there. But well, we're just doing some island hopping here. You go to one island and then you look around and then you go to another island and you look around. And How much did this cost, baby? All three of us, 1,700. 1,700 pesos, which is about 30 bucks, right? 30, 35 dollars? Divided by 54. Okay. I'm not dividing it by 54. Ooh, what if you, what? Oh, there's a dog. Jesus Christ, there's a dog. Anyway. There's islands all over the place. $31.48. Yeah, $31.48. So I was pretty close. Well, there's somebody lives down there. That's why the dog is there. Anyway, yeah, just go out and this is really the mouth to the Ling the the bay, Lingayen, right? Lingayen Bay, right? Yeah. Well, you can come here, we'll take a picture over here with the stack. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. We got here by boat. It's windy and it is rough. I'm wet. So they got a gigantic Oscar Mayer wiener being yanked around by boat. This is kind of poor. Huh? So we're up here now. Lingayen Gulf. The Gulf of Lingayen, right? Is that what that is? That's what that is over there. Honestly, I think they've had multiple different paths up here. Yeah. They take uh, bamboo, I think, and then put, they build it and then they put concrete around it and make all these little knot wooden structure looking things. And mommy's eating the typical holla holla trying to make William a full, full blooded Filipino. Ooh. 
and that sand, I'm gonna have to put some sunblock on. Well, they gave me a plastic bag to carry all my garbage. Yeah. And I put it in my bag. You did? I know. Oh, mommy. Oh, look, people were putting their names in there. That's cool. Look, they put their names in the leaves and it grows out. Oh. Jover Comerford. No, that's not what that said. Anyway, so here's to debunk the rising sea levels and global warming. And we're all going to be dead in 12 years. This is coral. This is coral or shell rock. Uh, coral shell rock. It's coral. That was a living organism that lived beneath the sea. And I am, oh, I don't know, 150 feet above sea level right now. Right now, because the sea is down there. So this was below the water line at one time. Below the water line. And it's no joke. It's, it's no joke, man. I'm serious. Yeah, that's, that's it. So I don't want to live, be alive if the water ever rises this high because we'd all be, you know, underwater till clear till the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> be a lot of people to put in the Rocky Mountains. But it is possible and it does happen or it has happened in history that the water level was here for a long time to form all this coral. Long time. Long time. Right, mom? Mm -hmm.